Charles Darwin was not a man of thunderous proclamations, but of quiet, dogged observation. Born on February 12, 1809, in Shrewsbury, England, Darwin seemed destined for a conventional life, first as a doctor, then perhaps as a clergyman. Yet the steady beat of curiosity thudded louder than any professional expectation. His fateful voyage aboard HMS Beagle in 1831 changed everything. As the ship charted the coasts of South America and the Galapagos Islands, Darwin collected fossils, sketched exotic creatures, and noted the small but striking differences between species across isolated islands. These observations gnawed at his mind, demanding explanation. Back in England, Darwin withdrew from the public eye, pouring himself into decades of research, correspondence, and relentless thinking. He bred pigeons. He studied barnacles for eight laborious years. He read the economist Thomas Malthus, who argued that populations grow faster than their food supplies, leading inevitably to competition and struggle. Here, Darwin found the vital clue. In nature, not every creature survives to reproduce. Those with slight advantages, sharper beaks, swifter legs, keener eyes, were more likely to endure and pass on their traits. Over vast stretches of time, these tiny advantages accumulated, sculpting new species altogether. He called this grand mechanism natural selection. Darwin hesitated to publish, fearing both scientific ridicule and societal backlash. The Victorian world, steeped in religious belief, was not ready to hear that life evolved without divine intervention. But in 1858, when Alfred Russell Wallace, working independently in the Malay archipelago, sent Darwin an essay outlining nearly the same theory, Darwin was spurred to act. The two men's findings were presented jointly, but it was Darwin's 1859 book On the Origin of Species that exploded into public consciousness. Darwin's argument was elegant, and to those willing to see it, undeniable. Nature selects. Species are not immutable, they are dynamic, ever shifting in response to the pressures of their environments. His work unleashed a storm. Some hailed him as a visionary, others denounced him as a heretic. Darwin bore the controversy with characteristic humility, retreating to his beloved downhouse to continue his experiments on plants, worms, and all manner of living things. In the end, Darwin transformed how humanity sees itself, not as separate from nature, but deeply enmeshed in it 